Little specks flying around your bananas. Oh, okay. okay. Little gnats hovering around your houseplants. It's the season of the grapes. The season of the grapes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Every year I have to tell the story. Uh-huh. This time of the year, I right. uh, was at a restaurant and there are fruit flies at the restaurant. And this is a fancy, this was a, a nice restaurant. It wasn't a, you know, you know, whatever. The waiter, you know, oh, don't worry. It's the season of the grapes. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't want to eat fruit flies. <laughs> okay, I really don't. <laughs> Especially because I'm paying for, you know, veal Oscar and I don't want to be eating <laughs> fruit flies with it. Um <laughs> Anyway, yeah, fruit yeah. flies are not fungus gnats. Two different things. Different fruit flies are the thing that's flying around your fruit. Okay, fungus gnats are the things that are flying in your plant soil. Two different insects altogether. Yeah. Fruit flies are actually related to the common house fly. I, they, I, I've done done a lot of research, and Julio, I noticed that you brought a banana today. I did. You know that sometimes they don't come from your house, even though it appears that they came from your house. Uh There's eggs on that banana that hatch while they're at your house. Uh And then all of a sudden, (laughs) guess what? You got fruit flies. You got fruit fruit (laughs) flies. Uh, See, adult fruit flies can can live to, gosh, they can live 50 days. 50 days. Um, And and eggs, let's just see. Let's just say they're prolific. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And that uh, again, I then they feed right away. That so one female fruit fly can lay as many as you ready for this? I know you're sitting down. Five hundred eggs. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Watch your fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Watch your fruit. I don't know. A little protein. Um, but as much as five hundred days over their lifespan, and again, that's for forty or fifty days. And they're going to want to, like, you'll see them. I mean, they, they are in, a, no matter how hard the grocery store tries. I mean, you know, back at the family farm, we used to put fans up to try to just deter them from hanging around. And and a lot of people say, oh, I put vinegar out. Yeah. Yeah, that, that attracts them. That's perfect. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know yes, it, it makes them pass out in there. And sometimes it you feel like you're doing a good thing. But uh, the thing is, is trying to make sure that you're keeping that area clean. Um, and that, <laughs> they'll breed in your drains. So make sure that, just make sure that you're you're cleaning often. Okay. Um and it says fruit flies only need fermenting fruit or a moist film of organic material to breed and thrive. Yeah, I don't know. Lots of research done on fruit flies. And, and this is weird. I'm never going to look at you the same again, Julio. Uh, humans share 75% of the genes which cause disease with fruit flies. Wow. How about that? Right. That's incredible. That is. <laughs> you start that. buzzing on the way home. <laughs> You'll know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to open. I'm going to roll down the window. <laughs> All right. So what do you do? You've got fruit flies. And I said, don't do the whole trick with the. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Fruit fly traps, right, Hole? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they're the best. Are uh, Non-toxic, yeah. right? They're food-based liquid to lure fruit flies inside. It looks like a little apple. And once they go in the trap, they can't get out. They're done. Um, That's right. So they're not going to breed anymore. And that they last for about a month. And that you'll be surprised that all of a sudden they're attracted into that apple. They get stuck in there. They can't get out. You're not going to hear them buzz like the movie the fly <laughs> you seen the fly <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so they're not you're not going to hear them uh-huh. <laughs> okay but but again they're not going to get out and look it happens to all of us i know that i've had fruit fly issues and i've used that that little apple trap and it works perfect i've tried to do like a hybrid of the the vinegar and i put soapy water and it all it did is made more cum <laughs> Now, what, all right, so the difference between a fungus gnat, 
which is on the soil, which a lot of pla- house plant owners have problems with. Um, Aaron, do you, do you have any issues with your with fungus gnats at home? Not really. No? Nope. Nope. Yeah, you're just saying that because, you know. Yeah. yeah. He's no, always I, clean. I, I don't <laughs> have any issues with fungus gnats. Yeah. I know you had a little at one point. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Plenty. Tree. I, I, I spray. You spray? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. Okay. All right. It's like, yeah. I'm an informed gardener, man. Come on. <laughs> right. Give me some credit. Yeah. Give me some credit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got to do? I mean. First of all, the fungus gnat larvae usually in, in the first couple inches of the growing medium, um, and if and if you have your plants on the moist side, they're going to be feeding on the fungi, the algae, and the and again decaying organic matter, um, even like the plants' roots and stuff that they're going to be eating in there, uh, and that they'll go and they will pupate on the soil, not on the plant. Now, um, I recently found something out I was all excited about. I keep saying how New Jersey has outlawed imidacloprid. They did not on houseplant because the percentage use on houseplant uh, for imidacloprid is low and that they're allowing it to be used. And it so it is perfect for controlling fungus gnats. I have heard all kinds of ways that people try to do it, but it doesn't really work. Um, Because, again, fungus gnats, like all of the insects that we ever talk about on these shows, they have first its eggs, then they they become immature, then become adults, then they they breed, then there's eggs, then because it's a it's a whole cycle, you know the the the, what the circle of life. life. Yeah, yeah, I've seen Lion King, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so. What happens is that they, they, you may kill the adults and you think that they're gone and you go and you, you know, kick back and say, ah, I yeah. finished my problem. But no, they come right back because you didn't control the eggs. Using the houseplant imidacloprid uh, granules will keep that so that it will have a longer residual. So, so that's my best result for fungus gnats. Um, fungus gnats are not good flyers. Uh, they kind of like bump into things and, and they're more like, you know, they only fly for short distances. So it's not like they're Fly. flying all over. Now, yeah. fruit flies, on the other hand, you yeah, know, they, they are yeah. very good flyers, but fungus gnats, it's not, remember, they're yeah. different. They're different things where that people get mixed up all the time. They're only alive for like seven to 10 days, but the ladies can lay up to 200 eggs um, and cracks and crevices of the growing media. And then it, if it contains, like most potting soils have a lot of peat moss in it, and they that's something they're attracted to because it does hold uh, moisture. Room temperature, that's the other thing. It's like the indoors is perfect for growing fungus gnats because 65 to 75 degrees, it's perfect. It's perfect. Continual reproduction. And it's really more of a nuisance. They're not going to hurt your plants, but they're going to, you know, they're going to make you feel like (laughs) your plants aren't being taken care of. And, you know, it's just, again, it, it's the decreased day length too. Has anybody noticed that the the days are shorter? I have. Oh yeah, sure. I have. Like in the morning, it's like, it's like, it's it's a night bright morning. It's like, it's just getting light now. You know, so, and at nighttime too. Yeah, it is. Uh, they like that. They like that. Try to do this. Try to make sure that, that, that your soil is drying out. Use the systemic imidacloprid um, type of insecticide, which is a systemic granular insecticide for houseplants. You want to spray, if you want to spray, you can use a pyrethroid based insect, which is. You know, one of our thrins that we talk about all the time, bifenthrin, sefluthrin, permethrin, uh, any of those will work, um, which we advertise constantly because we love it so much, is a triple action by Fertilome and VPG that that is a great product because it will control other insects that happen to be on your houseplant. And it has both neem oil as well as a pyrethrin, uh, permethrin. Uh, or pyrethrin, rather. 
again, it's going to, you need to do it this way. And, you know, somebody asked me, he's like, can you use carnivorous plants? <laughs> yeah, but they're not going to be very effective. If I were to choose one, it would be the sundew plant, which acts like sticky flypaper. And, and it attracts it to it. And pitcher plants will kind of do the same right. thing. Uh, it's a fun type of thing to do, but not a very effective thing to do. And that also, it could be that they're creating a circular effect where the plants like to be in moist soil, therefore that the, they lay the eggs and then they hatch and then they come up and then they eat them and then they find, you know. Yeah. So it's not necessarily going to solve your problem. Imidacloprid is the best way to go. Right. Um, and again, that's systemic granulars, granular for insects, uh, for insect uh, and house plants. Um, that's what you're going to, that's what's going to work. Um, fruit flies, you got to use traps. For fungus gnats, you need to use a type of insecticide. And again, imidacloprid or one of the Thrin sprays will work best.